Welcome to Tom Girl, where we talk all things sports, entertainment, fashion, and adventure. On today's show, we're talking to actor, writer, producer, director, and owner of his own film company, Burton Films, Andrew Burton. The filmmaker wrote, directed, and stars in All the Lord's Men, which is out now in select cities and available everywhere on digital. Welcome to the show, Andrew. Thank you, JJ. It's great to be here. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's dive in because you have such awesome artwork around you all supporting the film. Let's start out by talking all about All the Lord's Men. I just, I watched it today and just crazy. So I want to, I want to know more about your inspiration, where this came from since you wrote, directed, acted in it and, pr and put it all together. Yeah, well, I know it's a pretty crazy movie. It was definitely meant to be a little bit surreal. Um influence wise you know I was kind of sitting there writing it kind of like you know David Lynch kind of stuff was in my mind uh Miami Vice the television series and the movie was also in my mind while I was writing it um and then just kind of a lot of I don't know just I was going for a really kind of a strong atmosphere in kind of a mood like a mood piece when I made this movie so I know it might be a little bit flimsy on plot but I think what people seem to really be responding to is that it does impart a pretty interesting mood, I think, to whoever watches it. You know, I'm really big on strong visuals um, and then strong kind of use of, you know, sonic landscapes and different music. Um, so I was really just focusing on that when I was making this movie, trying to make this little surreal sort of detective drama, I guess, you know? Mm -hmm. It's about these cops who are trying to solve a murder um, in Los Angeles and they live in this cult. Um, they live with a writer. They live with a woman who claims to be a god. They live with the cult leader himself, and they live with a couple Girl Scouts. Um, it's a very eclectic, kind of like strange group of people, but they all kind of are fun. They all kind of have their own little interesting kind of professions and hobbies. And yeah, the movie um, really is just kind of like a week in their life, kind of mostly kind of just like looking at them with kind of a neutral kind of eye just like seeing what what's going on here and there's a lot of weird stuff that happens and I think it's kind of fun mm -hmm. yeah totally totally fun yeah. and definitely you said visuals that's I think one thing that definitely stuck out to me I thought it was shot so well and just did have such a mood to it it was really kind of fun and so you felt like it was just like it, it kind of sucked you in and got you along for this kind of interesting ride you know yeah it's like an interesting fun entertaining ride and yeah, I think it's a fun movie. So how was casting for this project? Did you use people that you knew or did you hold a casting call? Um, it was probably about like half people who I found through a casting call um, with kind of mostly, I guess, kind of self tapes that they sent in. Um, and then the other half was mostly people that I had actually auditioned before. Um, so I'd probably known them um, in kind of like a friendly, but also kind of a working relationship for about six months um, prior. Um, cause I'd actually auditioned them about half a year prior for, um, the filming of Pan American volume one. Um, cause that year I filmed not only all the Lord's men, but also, um, Pan American volume one, two, and three. So yeah, I, I, it was, it was like mostly familiar faces for me. Um, which was obviously like, it was a lot of fun to work with people that, you know, you already know it just like helps things kind of move along. It's just, it's fun. And also I think I like the idea of just using kind of familiar faces in a lot of movies going forward. Um, cause it kind of, kind of does help to create this kind of little cinematic universe, which is like, you know, you don't have to be Marvel to like want to create one of those, you know, so that's what yeah. I'm trying to do. No, I love it. One of my favorites is Adam Sandler. So you kind of reminded me of, you know, using his friends, people, you know, totally. that, that universe. I love, yeah. it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so tell me about the shooting process. I think I read you shot this in just a few days. Um, yeah. So we shot it in five days, um, which sounds absurd. Um, but it's doable. Um, you know, if you shoot roughly 20 pages per day um, and you kind of stick to one location, it's doable. Um, you know, which it basically means like everyone got one to two takes. Um, it means you're kind of stuck with like the most basic types of shots, you know, like a wide shot and then kind of moving for some super minimal coverage. Um, but I think it's a nice way to work. And I think actors kind of like it too, because actors aren't like standing there waiting around the whole entire time. They're just like, they're moving, they're acting all day. They're like doing their job. They're like 
12 hours in a row and most actors kind of enjoy that I enjoy it it's fun mm -hmm. what's the mood like on set on one of your sets um well I try to keep it you know relaxed ish um but it's 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 fast moving um you know it's it's, it's fast paced um yeah no I definitely the day starts relaxed you know it would be terrible if I came to set as the director in like a terrible mood and I was just like yelling at people. So that's not happening. Um, so, you know, you try to start in a good mood. Um, and then, you know, that usually that type of good mood can usually stay for the duration of the day. Um, you know, um, but filmmaking is arduous and it's a very kind of physical, difficult at times endeavor. Um, so, you know, you try your best to like keep everyone in good spirits, but it can be hard when you're limited to, you know, a five day shoot schedule. Yeah. Um, it's, it can be stressful. What's your trick for balancing it all? Because not only are you there like showing up as the director, you're showing up as an actor and you're also producing the film, you're doing all of it. So how are you able to compartmentalize and make it all work? I think it's just a lot of little micro moments throughout the day you know it's like it's maybe it's like a buddhist thing i guess you try to like be super present when you're doing the one thing that you're doing um so when i'm acting i'm like just an actor and i'm like super there and then the moment you know the take ends um sometimes that's me calling cut on myself um you know i'll run behind the camera and i have my director hat on which is also kind of the producer hat um i don't even know if you can separate them um, and yeah, it's just kind of a bunch of little kind of micro moments of like super kind of present focus as much as you can. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly kind of fun. I, I like that really just kind of workload on set is actually kind of enjoyable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How is it reading or acting out your own words? Do you ever struggle with that? Or is that even better since it, it comes out of your voice? Um, I don't think I've struggled with it, honestly. Um, you know, maybe it would be different to act with other people's words because um, there's an element where it's like the words came from me and I, I can't like ignore that fact. So it's like you, you want a certain distance, I suppose. Um, and when the distance not there intrinsically, I guess, I don't know, it, you, you kind of end up figuring it out, but it's 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 been fine so far. Um, it's really just about kind of wearing the different hats and like allowing things to kind of coexist, but still kind of have their own kind of weight and little micro kind of world, like within the world of the film set that you create. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you have any moments um, in this film that really stood out to you of like either a favorite scene you shot or maybe something that happened while shooting that we didn't all get to see in the film? Any Any great moments that come to mind? Yeah, well, we were trying to shoot a big party scene, actually, um, and you kind of see a snippet of it in the film. Um, it was supposed to be a larger party, though, um, and the two French guys were kind of supposed to, like, become kind of like the leaders of, like, some crazy kind of warehouse, like, rave dance party that was going on. Um, and in the screenplay, I had, I had written, like, you know, a hundred extras dancing in this like crazy kind of like rave in this like giant warehouse. Um, but, you know, budget concerns being what they were, um, we ended up using the very small living room that was afforded to us in the house. Mm -hmm. um, and we had like five extras instead of the hundred that I wrote. So um, that, 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 that was a scene that could have been cool and was not even filmed um, for just kind of production reasons. Um, and then, yeah, the last day in the desert, um, we had 20 pages roughly to shoot um, and probably about five hours of daylight because, um, you know, we left LA at like maybe 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Um, and got to the Mojave Desert at like maybe 10 or 11 a.m. I forget, but we had like no time to shoot anything. So I was just running around like a headless chicken trying to like figure out like how to maximize our time. And it was just honestly a lot of time management stuff that got kind of crazy. Yeah, the desert shots looked great though. Thank you. I wonder yeah. where all the locations were. And then was the one house uh, a valley house? Uh, yeah, it was uh, on Mulholland Drive. Um, I think, um, it was, sure, it, it was in the valley somewhere. Yeah, but on Mulholland Drive side. Yeah. So it was just a little house we rented and we basically did everything there for four days in a row. And 
it was kind of fun. Yeah. yeah talk about how you managed that. So how you um, worked with your budget and how you went about getting the locations and just kind of the logistics of putting this film together. Um, well, you know, first I finished the screenplay um, and then I kind of did the little line budget. Um, and yeah, the location, you know, it was, we rented it like on a per day basis um, so that we tried to fit that within the budget. And then, you know, you got to obviously budget out how much actors and crew cost and the lights and everything. Um, I think my main focus here um, and just going forward, like when you're working with like a smaller budget, I think the money is best spent on a good camera. You know, in this case, we have the Alexa mini LF, um, which is like a top of the line camera that like any large production would use. Um, we had a fairly okay lights package. Um, and then obviously the talent is where you want to kind of invest money too. Um, so yeah, I think really just with that type of budget, my focus was on like, how do we get all this money on screen? Um, and I think that is, has to do with, you know, camera and lights and talent. Um, so that's kind of where all my focus was when I was like budgeting this thing out and kind of planning out like where to allocate kind of resources and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what about now getting it out there and distribution? How's that process been? Um, it's been good. I have, uh, you know, taken it upon myself to kind of um, release this, um, I guess, myself um, through, you know, certain channels, which I think any indie filmmaker can probably find. Um, but, you know, it's currently on, you know, iTunes, um, Amazon, Vudu, um, and it's going to be on a few more platforms soon. So, and, and then also I um, got it in the theaters uh, for about a month run um, in uh, July and August. Um, so that, that was fun. And it's actually going to open in Singapore um, in Asia on uh, the 16th of September, which is two days from now. So yeah, I've just been trying to get it out there globally as much as I could, can. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, let's talk about you also have your other projects, and it's a trilogy, this Pan American. So tell us more about that. Yes, um, Pan American started as a 500 page screenplay that I wrote actually um, last about a couple of years ago. Um, and then I filmed all of it last year. Um, we filmed three uh, volumes of it. Um, they're all kind of two hour films. Um, yeah, it's it's a very <laughs> It's a very big thing and it's just starting to come out in festivals soon. Um, we're still kind of in the process of um, kind of creating all the materials for it and stuff. So it's still very much kind of brewing, but yeah, we filmed, you know, three movies last year for Pan American, which is like three features. I think it's pretty kind of cool to have, you know, done. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I wrote and directed that and I acted in it. Uh, Eric Roberts is one of the uh, actors in it also. Um, we filmed it um, all over uh, California, New York, uh, Texas, Florida, and Germany. Um, so it was just like a lot of fun. Just kind of, you know, we worked with crews, you know, in Germany, um, all the different kind of states we filmed in. It was just kind of fun to like work with these kind of very kind of diverse uh, cast and crew and just see how that all worked. It was fun. You really took advantage. You were very productive during COVID times, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So have you always been into this industry? Have you were always a writer or acting as a kid? Um, yeah, I think I kind of started expressing myself creatively first um, as a writer. I think just kind of, you know, in sixth grade, probably I kind of started just like really taking like prose writing seriously. Um, teachers always kind of thought that my stuff was a bit funny, I guess. Um, maybe even a little bit satirical, um, or certainly a certain kind of dry humor, I think was always present. So that kind of got me kind of started with just like prose and kind of short stories. Um, and then, yeah, I think I probably started like screenplays, just kind of hammering those out like in high school. Um, so that, that was that. Um, and then I kind of went into acting, I think, after I kind of satiated enough of kind of the writing bug for a bit. Um, and yeah, when I was at school um, on the East Coast, you know, I made a lot of trips like to LA and to, to New York um, on my off terms. Um, and also just whenever I had like time off to like um, do acting classes and just kind of engage with that kind of world and like do that while I was writing. Um, and then directing kind of came later when I wanted to put them all together. Yeah. And yeah. you do, you claim pretty much a self-taught filmmaker. So you yeah. didn't go to film school or you just, you just kind of just picked it all up on your own. I just picked it up. Um, you know, I think, 
maybe at first there was like me trying to emulate like Scorsese or like um, Clint Eastwood or Takeshi Kitano. Um, these are filmmakers with like kind of very kind of like clear and distinct, but also kind of minimalistic kind of like shooting styles. Um, so I think I kind of started with that because it's kind of, um, I don't know, it just, it, was, it, it just kind of felt right as far as like how I could kind of start like my kind of visual journey as a director. Um, but yeah, it's, it's developed a bit more and yeah, I just kind of, I, I just kind of figured out, you know, I, I made some short films um, when I first got to LA right after school and then made a feature. Um, I've just kind of been, been learning while on set for all of it, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are some of the tips that you've, you know, learned now since you have a few under your belt that you're like, oh, okay, I won't do that again, or this is really good to know? Um, well, I, th I think the concept as a director of like starting with a wide shot um, and then kind of moving in to give the actors, you know, coverage was like something which was quite foreign to me when I first started. When I, when I made my first feature, um, Roma 96, I, I did not know like any of that kind of stuff. So I basically just kind of shot like chronological kind of shot by shot by what I thought the edit would be, you know, um, but that's not very nice to actors because they don't, it just, it's very hard for them to kind of act well when the director is doing such a thing um so yeah i think kind of learning about the concept of like how to shoot so that actors can kind of their time can be you know used the best um i think that was a big thing i learned um and yeah you know i kind of have also first ad'd for myself on a few of these films um which basically means that i was kind of over my own shoulder like telling myself to like hurry up or like whatever you know um it's like the low budget kind of nature kind of meant that I like had to really shoot fast so yeah I think from like day one I've really just been pressuring I've been pressured to shoot like super fast and kind of like a minimal kind of like shot shot schedule um so I think that's actually been quite helpful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and then you now have started your own company your film company what was the decision to do that and how is that going for you um, it's going great. I think the decision to kind of start my own independent um, film production company um, was really just creative control, honestly. Um, I, I'm quite happy with the product that I can produce. Um, and I just kind of want to give like the best infrastructure I can manage to kind of the fulfillment of the creation and distribution of that product. Um, so yeah, it's really just about kind of authorial control and just me just kind of loving the process from like the script stage, all the production stuff, uh, the post-production stuff, the marketing. It, it's just me wanting to like be very involved with all of it from, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you seem to really have a love and passion for the creative process and then letting yeah. it be the way it, you know, is going to organically go. Yeah, I, I, I just love making movies, writing movies, acting, directing. I just... I like doing it. So I think starting a production company is like the best way to just kind of keep your hands on that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So is it just how many people are in the, in the company or do you work with the same people or yeah, tell me more about the company. Um, it's basically me and like a handful of a few people right now. Um, and it is growing slowly. Um, but yeah, we mostly just kind of creating kind of like, I guess, lower budget feature films. Um, which hopefully look like way bigger budget than they actually are. Um, and yeah, kind of doing that like on a year basis, I guess, trying to make like, you know, a certain number of movies per year, um, just consistently forever, basically. Um, and hopefully they just get better and the budgets can get slightly bigger. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. You know, all these, you know, dreams and goals. And I just, yeah. I, I still can't believe how many cranked out just in that one year alone. That's very, yeah, impressive. four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah. four. <laughs> So I do want to ask you, so prior to all the filmmaking, you were actually an internationally ranked skier growing up. You grew up in Oregon and then you were a ranked skier. So tell me about being a ranked skier. Yeah, um, well, this was in uh, FIS racing, uh, FIS ski racing. Um, it definitely kind of, you know, I started skiing probably when I was like four, I think, at um, Mount Hood, um, which was like an hour from Portland, Oregon, where I grew up. Um, and, you know, I spent the summers um, starting probably like in sixth grade, I started um, going to the glacier at Mount Hood and I skied like probably, I don't know, like two months, two out of the three months per th every summer, like training, uh, ski race training. 
Um, Cause you know, there's a glacier up there and like ski teams from all over the world, like go there and just like stay at my hood all summer to train for the next race season. Um, so I was always doing that. Um, and then when high school started, you know, that's when I started kind of doing fist ski racing. Um, so this basically saw me traveling around all year and missing a lot of school and kind of juggling like school um, academics, juggling that with kind of sports and stuff. I was like traveling um, really kind of with like a tiny team, like an independent little team. Um, a lot of the time it was just me and my dad actually just kind of traveling to like different ski races around the world. Um, you know, I've raced in Australia, I've raced uh, in all over Canada, um, Colorado, all over the United States, East Coast. Um, so yeah, you know, I mainly competed in slalom, um, a little bit of GS, but yeah, it was, I, I like to, th- it kind of feels like skiing was like my life until maybe freshman year of college, honestly. Um, yeah, I was just always ski racing all over. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Anything you bring from like your mentality as an athlete in skiing that kind of translates over to your filmmaking now? Um, okay. First thing that comes to mind is probably persistence. Um, as a ski racer, um, this is common, but it was especially common for me. Um, I would um, DNF a lot, like not finish the race, um, which means basically you crashed on the way down the hill or something, um, which is like, it's common, you know, in ski racing when you're trying to like go as fast as you can, it just, it happens. Um, So I I think just kind of having done like thousands of runs probably where I just like, you know, I had to like give it another go. I just, you know, I just learned persistence from like such an early age. Um, So like the concept of like giving up on something is like almost a little foreign to me. Um, so probably persistence, um, hard work, um, and probably like, I did a lot of this, like, as like a team independent, you know, um, cause when I was in high school, um, I went to like a normal high school in Oregon, you know, um, and a lot of my competitors went to like, uh, ski academies. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it was like a lot of just kind of like organizing my own training, um, organizing my own travel, all that type of stuff. Um, so I think from then, you know, from there, I, I really learned kind of how to just kind of be like a little mini entrepreneur probably. And I think that has basically informed a lot of my kind of mental roadmap as like a filmmaker and a really kind of running a little production company now. Oh, definitely. I'm sure that uh, planning all your ski stuff and and you're you're doing all that stuff now. You're kind of doing the same with your filming. It's all the same stuff. So yeah, it's fun. Yeah, that's great. So what projects do you have uh, in the works? Um, So... I'm writing the little mini kind of trilogy um, that's going to be like super kind of micro budget. Um, I'm almost done with it. It's going to start filming like early next year. And then like a slightly larger thing um, called Chernobyl High is also going to start filming next year. Um, And, you know, these are like kind of comedy dramas. um, And um, yeah, they're still kind of brewing, but I'm going to film them all next year. So that's going to be that's going to be a handful of movies. So I'm excited to kind of give people more info on those when I can. Will you be acting in those as well? I will be acting in those, yes. Um, Acting, um, writing and directing, and then producing as well. So I will be doing all of it again. And um, I think um, I'm trying to just raise my game for like, you know, all these elements when when I go out to start shooting again. Yeah. What are some of your like ultimate goals and dreams that you have for your career? Um, You know, I do want to be critically acclaimed to a certain extent and I also want a certain audience to just I want you know I want people to start watching my movies um so I want you know like I want mass I want a good amount of success with my movies um and yeah I want to kind of become quite good at directing and kind of known for that and then also for acting and for writing um and yeah I just really want to get super good at all these things and kind of keep improving with each outing and just really you know have a kind of a long super long career where I'm just like constantly kind of building upon the last thing to make the next thing better yeah, yeah. for those out there listening who want to kind of follow in your steps and either have dreams of acting or directing or producing or doing all of it as you are let's maybe give them some advice or some things that you've learned along the way um like first how do you stay how do you stay on top of all of it how do you stay on top of getting the, the film from from the start of production to the end? Um, I think you have to feel good as a person. So let's say the most basic and boring thing is like, 
eat healthily and sleep well. <laughs> um, Cause you know, if you, if you get, you know, on a crazy sleep schedule, it can be like, you can lose your mind quite easily, I think. So, you know, just be a healthy, happy person that can help you kind of maintain a certain kind of routine. Um, and yeah, routine. Um, I do write like every single day, um, even if I don't want to write. Um, and that has helped me, you know, it helped me produce the 500 page Pan American thing, which is now three movies, which will be kind of coming out over the next, you know, this year and the next couple of years. Um, so like just kind of the routine of, of things really just kind of makes things happen, I think. Um, and it is that boring. Um, I don't think it is just like one day. It's just like he's suddenly just kind of like write like this Oscar winning screenplay. Um, I think there's kind of rare cases where you kind of like something just kind of pops out of you, I think. But I think generally speaking, if you want like a long career, you have to like do the same kind of boring single th thing every day. Um, and just kind of like make time in your schedule for that and kind of just like curate your life in such a way where you're like, you're constantly primed, you know, physically and mentally to do the thing that you're trying to do. Yeah. Do you write at a certain time every day or just does that vary? Um, it varies, you know, lately it's been a bit more of a evening thing. I think, um, sometimes it's more of a morning thing. Um, sometimes it's midday. Um, it really varies honestly, but I, I try to write like you know, five to 10, like final, final draft, like screenplay formatted pages, like per day, um, which is, can be a lot. Um, on some days it can feel like a lot because writing just goes slow. Um, and other days, you know, you can, you can whip that out in like an hour. Um, it, it just depends. Um, but I think the important part is like, you know, I sit at my desk every day and I just kind of, I kind of actively wait, I guess, um, for the words to come and eventually they come. But, you know, it takes well and it can be like one cup of coffee later, 10 cups, of five cups of coffee later. It's, you know, it's like, it depends, you know, but I'm always at the desk, like ready to write. Yeah. Any tips for, you know, raising funds or budgeting for indie films? Um, I think with budgeting, you should be really clear about like what you want your film to look like. Um, Cause I think a lot of the money in indie films, um, it, you know, goes to lights usually or just like camera or lenses, like kind of boring things like that. Um, so I think you kind of have to like know that if you want your film to look a certain way, you're going to have to like allocate a certain amount of funds to a really good light crew, a really good gaffer, um, give the gaffer like a nice kind of like light budget. Um, and then let your DP kind of like really just kind of get the lenses they want to get um with the budgets i've been working with you know we've been limited on lenses um so you know we basically have like three lenses you know um like you know 25 um 75 maybe like a 50 um millimeter lens so it's, it's like it's just I, I think camera and lights are like the huge kind of area to kind of focus um as an indie filmmaker trying to spend a small budget um and the lights crew don't skimp on that um and then you have to think about post um i think a lot of indie filmmakers do not think enough about post they don't think about the composers they don't think about how much the sound people cost um the colorist um how much you know marketing and distribution cost um so i, I think you just have to from day one just kind of sit down with an excel spreadsheet and like budget out how much pre production will cost, production will cost, and post-production. Yeah. Any other tidbits of advice that come to mind? Um, you know, try to present your best product to the people who are interested in your product. I guess, you know, have a reel ready. Um, kind of try to be well-spoken. Um, and just kind of, I was going to say, like, make sure your screenplay kind of fulfills certain genre conventions. But I, I think, you know, people these days are kind of more interested in like originality, which is great because I think like Hollywood is kind of opening up to just like, it's becoming more diverse in like many ways. Also just in terms of like storytelling, like what's accepted. Um, so I think just kind of being authentic and letting your screenplay and just yourself 
kind of just be what they are, um, letting your screenplay just like be its crazy kind of like original self. I, I think that's the type of thing that people will be most attracted to. Um, and then these people will kind of come together to kind of help you make a movie. Yeah, those are great tips of advice. Thank you for, for offering that for everybody. Um, let everybody know where can they follow you and, and continue watching your journey. Yes, um, people can go to uh, BurtonPicturesEntertainment.com. Um, and that's, you know, where my bio is. It's where my social media links are. Um, so yeah, uh, BurtonPicturesEntertainment.com. Um, if, if you just want to go on Instagram and find me quickly, it's uh, Burton Pictures Entertainment um, on Instagram. And yeah, you know, I'm always posting there about just little things I'm up to um, that are relevant to the movies. And yeah, it's, it's a great place to kind of know what's up vis-a-vis uh, -vis my movies. So Burton Pictures Entertainment. All right. Then tell everybody again where they can see um, the film All the Lord's Men, where they can catch it. Yes, uh, All the Lord's Men is currently out on digital platforms, um, Amazon, iTunes, uh, Vudu, uh, Google, YouTube, um, and then in a couple weeks, it's going to be out on all those platforms in Spanish and French versions, if that also interests you. Um, so yeah, it's out digitally now. Um, last month, it played in some theaters. Um, you may have missed that, um, but I do plan to make sure, you know, my coming films come out in theaters as well. Um, even if it's just like a tiny little run, um, you know, I believe in cinema. So yeah, you know, look out, you know, on my socials for um, future cinema and digital releases. Yeah. Well, I really look forward to watch. I can just see this whole career you're building. So it'll be fun to watch you over the years. And I just wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time too. So. Thank you, JJ. I appreciate it. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode here at Tom Grill. You can follow us everywhere at Tom Grill TV. Make sure you go to YouTube, subscribe. You can watch the videos there or check us out wherever you get your podcasts. All right, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.